Cougar Gold Cheese. A cheese celebrated by Washington State University alumni everywhere. While most know that Cougar Gold is made only by the WSU Creamery, few understand how much of the Cougar Gold cheese making process is done by the very hands of WSU students. Cheese making begins when thousands of pounds of milk arrive from the WSU dairy farm to the WSU creamery. After checking to see whether the butterfat to protein ratio is optimum for cheese making, the milk is then pasteurized by heating it to 161 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 15 seconds to kill any harmful bacteria before it is pumped into the cheese making vat. Inside the cheese making vat, the milk is stirred and cut by moving parts called agitators. There's just a a manhole, if you open the lid, you can see in there and see the agitators uh, that just turn and they, tur they turn two ways. One, one way that they turn, they're stirring and the blades flap shut so that there's a wide surface that's stirring the milk. And so the uh, cheese vat fills up with milk that's about 88 degrees and during that whole time it's stirring. Special lactic bacteria starter culture is then added to the milk. Different types of cultures are used to make different types of cheese. Cougar Gold has a unique flavor because it is made with a unique culture. Uh, we add the culture, the starter culture and the rennet to it, and then we let it set. And it sets up and turns into a big vat full of jello, basically. And then we reverse the direction of those agitators, and going backwards, the blades flap out so that it's just a knife uh, width, basically, that's cutting through that. Uh, coagulum and it ends up in as curds and whey by the time it's done cutting. A computer regulates the time, temperature, and agitation to help make sure that the proper amount of whey is removed. The mixture of curds and whey is then pumped into the finishing table where the whey will be drained off during the next two and a half hours. A rake is used to draw the curd to the sides of the finishing table as the whey drains off. Once most of the whey is gone, the curds knit together. The curd is trimmed by the cheesemakers so it can be cut into rectangular loaves. During the cheddaring process, the loaves are turned and stacked every 15 minutes for the next two hours. This turning and stacking helps to expel more whey and improves the texture and quality of the cheese. The loaves are then fed into the milling machine, which cuts them into thumb-sized curds that will allow whey to continue to drain from the cheese as it is pressed into the hoop. Salt is then added by hand. Then a blade pushes the curds along the bottom of the finishing table into an elevator where an auger lifts the curds above the hoops. The curds fall freely into the hoops that will shape the cheese during the next 18 hours. Each hoop holds enough curd to fill nine cans of cheese.
Pneumatic presses then squeeze the hoops so the curds knit back together. After spending an hour in the presses, the cheese is removed from the hoops and wrapped in cloth to prevent it from sticking and to give it a smooth outside surface. After that, it's back in the hoops and under the press for an entire night. In the morning, the cheese is then removed from the hoops to be sliced and put into cans. The cans are then vacuum sealed and placed in giant coolers where they are left to age for months at 45 degrees Fahrenheit before being offered for sale. Once the cheese is ready, it's either shipped to distant stores and customers or it is sold at Ferdinand's Ice Cream Shop located at the front of the creamery. It's there that you can buy all kinds of WSU Creamery cheeses or ice creams or even take a break in the observation room to watch firsthand how the WSU Creamery makes every cook's favorite cheese.